Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I'm about to show you guys how to make a Rasengan, you know, from Naruto and stuff. Show you guys just how to make it. You know, I got the animations, the sounds, and everything. And I'll show you guys pretty much how to script it. It's honestly really simple and stuff. And yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, of course, we're going to need, you already know, we're going to need a Rasengan model and stuff. Just to let y'all know, I got things like the Rasengan and the sounds from obviously the toolbox and stuff you guys can literally just open up the toolbox then just type in uh rasengan or naruto stuff and then you'll just find this so i got this i got this model from the um the workspace i mean the toolbox and stuff i named it rasengan and stuff and yeah simply you just want to name it rasengan make sure it's just a part and not an actual model itself right and then you want to put it in server storage you can name it rasengan simply right then I have my sounds. I have rushing on attack and rushing on charge. Rushing on charge. This is the sound that plays like when I trigger the jutsu. So it's like I'm creating the rushing on. This is the sound that plays. Rushing on attack is when I'm actually chasing a player with the rushing on. Like about to hit them and stuff. So yeah. You guys can once again just get these sounds from the toolbox or make your own sounds. Get whatever sounds you want pretty much. And then, of course, I have a rig here. Yeah, of course, I have a rig here to test and stuff like that. I simply went to Avatar, clicked Rig Builder, and then you can insert whatever type of rig you want. So, yeah, let's get straight into the scripting, though. Let's head on over to Starter Player and insert a local script into Starter Player Scripts. We can name this script Combat Script Local, right? Delete print hello world and we're going to need a remote event. So let's head on over to replicated storage and insert a remote event. You guys can name this combat event. And then we can reference it on the script. Local combat event is equal to game dot replicated storage wait for child combat event. Then we're going to need to get the user input service. So let's do local UIS is equal to game get service user input service then for our last variable we're going to need to get the local player or um, actually no we shouldn't yeah no we shouldn't even need the player let's go ahead and make a function right so we're going to say function call it attack triggered right and then parentheses we're going to put input then press enter then you're going to go on the outside and you're going to say uis dot input began connect attack triggered then delete those parentheses it it should not be yellow it should be it should look like this then inside the function we are going to say if input make sure you type this correctly as it will not autofill dot user input type oh sorry type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and input dot key code oh. uh, i keep forgetting it won't autofill input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot and i'm gonna go with e i'm gonna go with e key you guys can go whatever key you want then enter then i'm gonna say combat event fire server boom that's all we gotta do on the local side then we can go ahead and close this out we can insert a server script and server script service and then we can go ahead and name this combat script and in parentheses we are going to put server boom we're gonna delete print hello world and just like i said on the local script we are going to need to reference the combat event make a variable for the combat event we're gonna need honestly a lot of variables so first we're gonna get the combat event so local combat event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child combat event then i'm going to get the sound service and debris service so i'm gonna well hmm, do i still need to hmm, I, hmm, yeah, yeah I, can, I, I can still use it so yeah so I'm say local ss is equal to game get service sound service then local ds is equal to game get service debris right well it's not debris service but but you get it you guys get it though right then I'm going to reference the Rasengan model that that you should have in server storage local Rasengan is equal to game the server storage wait for child Rasengan right then now I'm gonna make I'm gonna make about four variables for for the animations because i have four different animations we have the wrestling on charge animation you know when you're creating the wrestling on the run animation when you're running with the wrestling on and the hit animation for when um the player that's attacking hits a player with the wrestling on and then there's an animation there's a stun animation for when, for when a player is hit by a wrestling on if that makes sense so first i'm going to say local 
press Sangon, charge animation or if you guys want to say it then you could just abbreviate and just say you could just use acronyms rca or something let's go to instance dot new animation and of course i'm going to say rasengan charge animation dot animation id is equal to quotation marks rbx asset id colon two forward slashes just to let y'all know these animations only work on r6 so if you're not using r6 you would need to get different animations okay so first id is one four three two seven three zero two eight four nine and then we can simply copy and paste this three more times so control c enter control v control v control v then just change it so instead of this being resting on charge we're going to change it to resting on run and of course change it here and then you're going to want to do this and then just of course update the id so so then I'm going to do one, four, three, two, seven, three, zero, seven, six, eight, eight. Then for here, I'm going to change this to Rasengan hit animation. Rasengan, there we go. on hit animation. And paste this here. And change this ID to one, four, three, two, seven, three, one, one, nine, six. Two. Okay, now for the last one, we're going to this should be the stun animation. So we're saying on stun animation, then we're going to paste this here, change the ID to one, four, three, four, four, five, eight, six, oh, three, and then one. Okay, there we go. And just like that, we have all the animations. Last variable we're going to, need to make is the table. We're going to use this table to make sure that the player is only hit the players only damage one time like they're only you know hit one time so we're going to do combat event that on server event connect function in parentheses we're going to put plr which is sort for the player then we're going to get the player's character local character is equal to player dot character then we're going to set the character's human and root part we're going to anchor it and stuff because we want the player to be you know standing still while they're charging up the wrestling on so character dot humanoid root part dot anchored is equal to true then we're going to clone the rasengan local rasengan clone is equal to oh, rasengan clone then i'm going to then i'm going to set the well constraint oh by the way i forgot to mention this so in the rasengan you want to insert a uh, weld constraint right you simply insert then just type weld insert a weld constraint you're going to want to make part zero the Rasengan, and you don't need to set part one. We're going to set part one via the script. So we're going to say Rasengan clone dot weld constraint dot part one. This is to make it so that the Rasengan is pretty much attached to the player's hand. So when they start running, the Rasengan will, mo will move with them. So we're going to say part one is equal to character, regular brackets, right arm. All right. Then we're going to unanchor the resting on because by default your resting on should be anchored so i'm going to unanchor it so that it's able to you know move with the player then i'm going to set up the animation tracks just three of them though we're going to set up the stun the stun animation later so local rct i'm using abbreviations resting on charge animation i mean resting on charge um track is equal to character dot humanoid load animation make sure you're typing this correctly as it will not autofill load animation pressing on charge animation and then just like before you guys can control c and control v this two more times and paste this and then just change this from rct to rrt and then rrt uh rising on pressing on run animation then change the, the third one to rht and this is the hit animation so hit pressing on hit animation and boom see like that we have the animation track set up we are then going to say rct play we want the animation to play for one second then we're also going to play the animation charge i mean we're going to play the charging the resting on charge sound effect so ss dot resting on charge we're going to play that for one second as well then we're going to use a wait so wait two seconds then we're going to set the resting on clone c frame so our single clone dot c frame is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot 
C frame times C frame dot new two comma negative one comma one point three. But once again, just let you just let you know all these numbers. You guys can play around with the numbers. I would recommend doing it exactly as I've done it, and once you see that it works perfectly fine, then you mess around with the numbers to to see like, okay, can I change this to get it to how how I want it to go and stuff. But yeah. So then after after that, we're going to set its parent. So wrestling on clone dot parent is equal to game dot workspace. We're going to use a wait. We're going to say wait two point five seconds. Then after that, I'm going to stop the RCT track. So we're going to make sure the animation track has stopped. So RCT stop, All right? Then we're going to unanchor the player's humanoid root part simply because the the uh, the player is about to start charging at the the enemy. Like the player can move and charge at the enemy with uh, the wrestling on. So I'm going to say character dot humanoid root part dot anchored is equal to false. Then I'm going to play the wrestling on attack sound. So SS uh, wrestling on attack. I'm going to play this. No set time. Then I'm also going to play the uh, wrestling on run run track or animation, I should say. Let me say play. Then we're going to set the character's walk speed to 32 because we want to make it seem like the player is running, right? It would look stupid if a player was walking with a run animation. So we're going to say character. We're going to say character dot humanoid dot walk speed is equal to 32 you guys can definitely play around with this and see whatever you like i'm just gonna go with 32 because it looks pretty nice with 32 not too fast but not too slow pause but anyway i'm gonna set up the function for when a player makes contact with another character so our single clone dot touched connect function in parentheses put hit then we're going to make a variable for the enemy character so local enemy character is equal to hit dot parent and then I'm going to say, then I'm going to say, if enemy character, my first child humanoid, we need to first verify that it is a something that contains a humanoid, so more than likely a player, and not table dot find, and not table dot find player attacked, the table we set up. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I forgot. To, <laughs> I actually forgot to make the table. Okay, so go up here. I forgot one variable. So you're gonna want to make a player attacked table. So local. Player attack is equal to special brackets, right? Oh, special brackets or curly brackets, whatever you want to call it, and stuff. This is just to make this is just to make sure that the player is only attacked once and not like double attacked or double hit, triple hit, whatever. All right, I'm going to say and not table find player attacked, comma enemy character dot name. So pretty much, if the player's name is if the player's name is not or as I say the enemy's name is not found in the table, then we're of course going to insert. Their name in the table so that the players only attack that one time. The so player attacked enemy character dot name. Then I'm going to start playing the um wrestling on run animation. So we're gonna stop track. Then I'm going to also stop the wrestling on attack, the wrestling on attack sound. So stop on that. Then I'm going to play the wrestling on hit animation. So play it'll kind of have like a it's gonna knock back the enemy, but at the same time kind of have like a little bit of a and a recoil to the, uh, the to the actual player who's attacking. So then I'm going to make the RST animation track, which is the last animation track we need. So local RST is equal to, make sure you do enemy character, not your character, the enemy character. That humanoid load animation. And I'm gonna load up the Rasengan stun animation, right? Then I'm gonna say RCT, I'm going to play set animation, right? And then I'm going to create an attachment. So I'm going to say local attachment is equal to instance dot new attachment. And then I'm going to parent set attachment to the players to the enemy characters humanoid root part. So enemy character dot humanoid root part. And then I'm going to create a linear velocity. This is how we're going to create the knockback effect. I honestly learned this right before making the video. I honestly was confused on how to make a knockback, but yeah. Linear velocity is equal to instance dot new, then linear velocity. I'm going to parent it to the attachment. Then I'm going to set its max force. So dot max force is equal to, you guys could just say, uh, just like four, five, nine, so it doesn't matter. Then I'm going to set the vector velocity. So linear velocity dot vector velocity is equal to parentheses. And please pay attention here because it's about to have a lot. So enemy character 
that humanoid root part that position very similar to raycasting minus character that humanoid root part that position on the outside of parentheses put die unit times vector three dot new and here's where the knockback effect comes into play where we are going to say 100 we're going to say 100 zero and mm, we, uh, we can say 100 too we can say 100 too right so we're going to say 100 and zero right and then what i'm going to and then what i'm going to do is go to the next line and then i'm forgetting the last thing oh yes yes of course add it to the debris service after the attachment so linear velocity dot part or no, what is it? i forgot what it's called oh attachment that's what it is attachment zero is equal to of course attachment the attachment we created then i'm going to add it to the debris service so add item so it's automatically destroyed so attachment after 0.1 seconds right because we only want the play to get knocked back for you know one time so just you know 0 0.1 of a second so then we're going to wait one second and after that we are going to destroy the wrestling on clone then i'm going to start the rht animation track i'm going to stop that from playing i'm going to set the character's walk speed back to regular humanoid dot walk speed is equal to 16 then lastly i'm going to remove the player's name from the table so table dot remove player attacked then i'm going to say table dot find player attacked comma enemy character dot name and boom just like that everything should work everything should work we should be good i can go ahead and test this we go ahead and click play and then let's see so if i press the e key as you guys can see the animation you guys hear the sound effects I'm creating the Rasengan. I'm running with it. You guys hear it? Then, boom. As you guys can see, it kind of re and gave me some recoil as well as it knocked the rig back. And then, just to show you guys that it works regardless of what, you know, what direction you're approaching and stuff, even if, like, it doesn't matter if you're coming, you know, from behind behind or the size or anything and stuff you're going to knock back the player in the direction they're facing so yeah that's how you make a basic wrestling i hope you guys enjoyed the video um thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys been showing i'm almost to 1.5 thousand subscribers shout out to my channel members i appreciate you guys channel members premium members i appreciate all you guys and thank you to everyone who's been watching my videos and stuff i really appreciate it and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video oh by the way if you want access to the scripts or model you guys can become a channel member by pressing the join button next to the subscribe button you can find out more about that in the description so i'll see you guys in the next video